So Desire was over here and we're just trying to find a little bit of efficiency when it comes to our caster plate assembly. So right now, the process is basically taking our, our billet uh, caster plate bearing mounts. We press our caster plate bearings into them. Then we use our lock rings to tighten them down to 35 foot pounds and then assemble them into our caster plates. Not that it's the least efficient thing in the world, but it can certainly use a little bit of tweaking. Right now, again, to do the whole process probably takes about a minute each. Every minute uh, that we can save, it means it's a minute that we can get something out to you guys a little bit quicker. So right now, basically, we're able to tighten that lock ring down. It's got some thread locker on there. Uh, we come over here to the, uh, to the vise, lock it back down into place. Use that tool again, and then torque it down to 35 foot-pounds, and move on to the next one. So it doesn't seem like that long, but again, being able to go lock ring by lock ring um, and just maybe drop one of these in, uh, he had some ideas of what he wanted to kind of do with that. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so here is the part that you guys were just looking at James assembling, and we need to make that 3D printed part. So I'm gonna go back through my timeline because I did just do this. So you can see the sketches here. Um, I started with a first a base and then I extruded that down. I then created the second extrusion, which was basically the outer shape of the part. And then the next step was the floor of the part where the part's actually gonna rest on. Um, then I created some fillets. Uh, I probably could have done the fillets at the end but going on further, I created a second sketch, which you'll see here on the top, and added some holes. These holes are gonna be anchor points. This is going to be the uh, socket head cap screw. So basically a socket head is gonna be able to fit in here and it'll be flush. Uses an Allen key style to tighten it. Moving on, I filleted all of the parts. And what we are left with is basically a completed component that simulates how this is going to work. I added probably 10 thou clearance all the way around on this um, for both this section and this section because I don't want it to be too tight but once installed um, this flat edge is going to be the point where it's not allowed to rotate but I did one more cool thing because I feel that the 3D print is not going to be strong enough on these corners here and here because when we're torquing it in place it's going to try and rotate it it's going to put a ton of pressure here and if we ever need to take a ring out it's going to put a ton of pressure here so i did something we're going to use a section analysis view to look but i actually added um, some internal cylinders which you can see here that uh, when 3D printed, these cylinders are gonna be basically solid. Um, what happens in 3D printing is that this is gonna be essentially a hex pattern with 25% infill, but in order to withstand the pressure, I think it'll just break away those sections slowly uh, one at a time before we know it, we won't be able to torque this anymore. So I just preemptively added these cylinders in which is what's cool with 3D printing because this is something you can't actually visually see, but when printed, these are going to be there. And then I also added five layers of material around wall. So any, any time that you need to have a wall, the 3D printer is gonna do five layers around each one of these cylinders. So it's just gonna make a much stronger section right where the load is gonna be at the highest points. And if this doesn't work, we'll do what I said, add a plate on the top, but that is essentially what I am doing to make this a faster process. So uh, let's see if it works. Let's go try it. Nice. There's internal cylinders uh -huh. that are right on the corners okay. that are inside that should add like a stiffness beams. Uh -huh. Can't see, it's invisible. It is nice because it's not going to scratch anything. This vice is also in a pretty annoying location. Way less walking, way less. Okay, so that's pretty satisfying. It might need to be stronger. 
Okay, so we hit the torque, but we did hear a couple cracks. Did your mic pick up? Yeah, I think there's a couple cracks. So it's probably not going to hold up to a bunch of use. I don't know. Maybe we were just, you know, kind of like the first time you lift something. Well, I can just torque it like five times in a row and see what happens. So then will that be mounted to the table or always use a vise? I obviously just put it in the vise to simulate it being mounted somewhere. So we can bolt it right next to the arbor, out of the arbor, into the jig here and make things much faster. Just a couple growing pains is what those first cracks were. I mean, let us know what you guys think of a video like this. We do stuff like this all the time. The company wouldn't be where it is if we didn't make jigs and things and the welders do the same thing. So if you like it, we'll show you more and we're doing this all the time. So until then, I'm going to Hungary's and I will see you guys on the next video.